Hello everyone. Welcome again in today's lecture in series of drugs acting on central nervous system. And uh, you can observe one thing in our screen that is the one which is related to that. Many times you might have seen this and uh, which sometimes which is very helpful or sometimes it has some other benefits, sometimes it has another purpose. With respect to today's topic, it is related with a sleep. So if you see, if you are going to see such type of any effect, so it is related to hypnotics. And if you have such type of, if you are observing such type of an image, directly, indirectly, we are going to in sleep. So today's lecture is related to this and which is one of the very interesting and very favorite concept related to that. So let's see what is this. You might have seen this as a beautiful baby having a very nice sleep. So see this, how is the baby is sleeping so nicely. And everyone is having this a beautiful stage. Everyone is loving this beautiful state that is in a sleep. So today we are going to discuss related to sleep and what is its role and what are the different drugs that are responsible for producing such type of sleeps. So that topic's name is in a hypnotics and sedatives. So before starting this chapter, first initially we will see what do we mean by the sleep and why does it is important and what happen if there is a disturbance. Some part we are going to see here in first initial first part and in second part we will see some another part. So physiologically sleep is regarded as a absence of wakefulness that is the most important thing and uh, brainstem is get involved in a process of falling in a sleep and try to maintain its sleep depending upon individual the duration and pattern of sleep is very much variable depending upon individual depending upon every variable every person is having a different duration different pattern of sleep some are sleeping very nicely some are not getting sleep properly number of things are there which are responsible for that why the sleep is not getting as well as one more factor is responsible for or one more factor is there which gives some uh, important role in a sleep that is the age if in our elder age, if in when we are in a child age, we are used to sleep near about 16 hours, near about 15 hours. But as we are starting to grow, our sleep is also started to reduce us. And when we are in the younger stage, at that time, the sleep is near about 7 hours to 8 hours, that is a sleep. So initially it's a 16 hours, after that it's a 7 hours. And if when we are in a older age, in geriatric age, at that time, again the sleep duration is get reduced. It might be near about three to four hours only. So these all patterns are get started, reduces slowly, slowly, slowly. As well as biological clock is also one of the important factor. Biological clock. So what do we mean by the biological clock? Biological clocks that is nothing but our twenty-four hours rhythm. So at what time we daily used to wake up? At what time daily we used to have our food, our exercise habit, our other routine habits. Due to that, if we have a habit of uh, having a food at 1 o'clock, so definitely as per the biological clock, near about 1 o'clock, even though we don't have any watch, even though we don't have any clock, at exactly at near about 1 o'clock, we are having hunger. Why? Because of it's in a biological clock. In the same manner, if we used to wake up early in the morning, 5 o'clock daily, then definitely without alarm, we can wake up at a 5 o'clock. So that is what about the biological clock. And this biological clock is help us to maintaining our health also as well as the sleep. And uh, 
with respect to sleep when we are having a sleep we could find out some important concept we could find out some interesting points that is the growth and restoration of tissue is related with the now sleep the baby a kid who is having a proper sleep near about 16 hours to 20 hours sleep the her, uh, that baby's growth is very good as well as the tissue development is also very good in that case as well as if we see the electroencephalography that we call as EEG, electroencephalography, that electroencephalography is also giving a very good result about that uh, uh, with respect to the sleep, as well as electrooculogram is also gives importance that sleep is having a good uh, importance. Sleep is having a good intention in our development of our bone, development of our body, as well as the electromyogram which is related to the muscle development this muscle development also very good with respect to the sleep and these all activities of the brain activities uh, related to our spinal cord is catched when we have a sleep that all that time that is a very uh, nourishment is one type of nourishment to our body which is one of the need of the body that's why in uh, you Ayurveda, they have suggested that near about six to seven hours sleep is a must for a proper health. If we don't have a proper sleep of uh, seven hours, then little bit some complications may arise. So, depending upon this condition, depending upon these all things, this uh, guy counting all these parameter, they have just concluded that. The sleep is get bifurcated in two major part that we call as REM and NREM. Right now we are not going to discuss about the REM and NREM. In practical, we are going to discuss about the REM. What do you mean by the REM? And what do you mean by NREM? And as well as this diagram also gives a very good explanation about the REM and NREM. So we will discuss it in a practical. Next week, that is the most thing that uh, starting with our point that is a uh, Whenever a person is having uh, difficulty in sleep, we need to take some external substances, some external agent to have on that sleep. Why we need a sleep? Because if we don't have a sleep, then there might be some complications arises. That is our performance is get disturbed. Our overall activities are get reduced. As well as if we see the concentration is also get reduced if we don't have a proper sleep. And even though the hormonal changes may occur in our body, which are not good for us, not good for our health. That's why this sleep is very important for us. And when the patient is having such type of insomnia, then the patients are get exposed to some drugs. And these drugs are like one is called as sedative. What do you mean by the sedative? Sedative, these are the drugs which reduces the excitement. That's the most important thing. These are the drugs which reduces the excitement and calm the patient. Calm is one of the very important things. Calm the patient. Most importantly, without inducing sleep. Are called as a sedative. But they may produce drowsiness. Drowsiness means, this image you could uh, give some idea about that. Uh, it feels like I am now getting a sleep but it is not a sleep. I'm getting a feeling of a sleep that is nothing but the drowsiness. So these sedatives, they are related with the drowsiness and they does not produces the sleep. They does not produces the sleep. So, sorry, they, uh, huh, yes, they does not produce a sleep. Particularly, they are reduces the excitement. They are reduces the excitement. So for the reduction of the excitement, these sedatives are get preferred. And second one is an a hypnotics. So hypnotics, it's an, these are the drugs, these are the substances which induces, which produces sleep or maintain the sleep. Which induces sleep or maintain the sleep. But such type of sleep is considered to be an, a natural sleep. We feel as a natural sleep. And uh, most important thing of the sleep is if we have a sound sleep, then next day, in next morning, we are getting lot freshness. That is the most important uh, uh, key of this sleep. If we are having a proper natural sleep, good sleep, sound sleep, then definitely next day we are having a very nice fresh day. And such type of effects might be produced by the hypnotics. 
so this is the definition of hypnotics and sedatives hypnotics are used hypnotics are used for inducing of the sleep and sedatives are used for reduction of the excitement for the calm down purposes sedatives are get preferred usually it is to be considered as the hypnotic sedatives are in a cns depressant disorder cns depressant and depending upon its time and depending upon its dose depending upon its quantity its uh, action is get varied totally it could be considered as an you know, it's a dose dependent action if we have on a dose uh, of 5 mg it produces a sedation but when we are increasing the dose of the sedation again we are getting effect that is the sedatives at higher dose can be act as a hypnotics at a smaller dose 5 mg of an barbiturate 5 mg of barbiturate produces sedative action but if we increase the dose of 5 mg to the 10 mg then it produces a hypnotic effect then it produces the hypnotic effect and uh, we can say like that the drug barbiturate is a sedative but when we increase the dose of the sedative it could be called as an hypnotics it could be said as a hypnotics because why as the dose is increases is a uh, reaction is get changed in the same manner if we are using a hypnotic in a lower dose then we can call this as an a sedative also at lower dose sedate hypnotics are as an a sedative so that's why it is called as a dose dependent action increase in a dose one type of action is produced reduction of the dose one type of action is produced so this is the most important point with the hypnotics and sedatives thus uh, when we starting a sedation then again we increase the dose it is produces the hypnosis again we increase the dose then it gives an a general anesthesia again we increase the dose then there is a, a severe high degree high grade of the cns depression so this is called as a you know, dose dependent variation so this is what about the hypnotic sedative and depending upon this this hypnotic sedatives are get classified in further parts first one is in you know, a barbiturate and another part is called as a non barbiturate so barbiturates first is a long acting barbiturates depending upon its duration of action how much period it produces action this uh, classification is produced first one is in a 8 hours duration that called as a long duration of action that is called as phenobarbiturate second one is intermediate acting barbiturate which is uh, producing its action from 4 hours to the 8 hours that is an a butobarbitone or pentobarbitone aminobarbitone these are the example next one is in a short acting barbiturate the duration of action is less than 4 hours example is in a secobarbitone third one is an ultra short acting barbiturate which is having action less than one hour that the example is an hyopentone sodium or methohexidone or hexobarbitone this is an example of the barbiturate apart from barbiturate one more class is there that we call as a non barbiturate so what are the non barbiturate so these are the barbiturate having a barbiturate derivative these are the all the barbiturate derivatives and these are the totally apart from barbiturate derivatives these are the benzodiazepines second one is that is an alcohol it also produces cns depressant action hypnotic relative action it produces like this some of the aldehydes like an paraldehyde as well as some other drugs like methaquilone or meprobromate is also one drug as well as antihistamines these are also produces cns depression or sedative action as well as the antidepressant say an antihistaminic like uh, uh, there are certain drugs like which are used for the treatment of uh, cough cetirizine like some of the drugs are there which may in some cases which may produces the uh, which are used for the treatment of the cough treatment of the sneeze cold so when we such you such type of uh, drugs we are use uh, they may produces a uh, sedation they may produce a sedation that's why they are as considered as an uh, antihistaminic drug so this is what the classification of sedatives and hypnotic there is one clue for the barbiturate uh, one story that you might know or uh, thing is that long ago very long ago when whenever we want to call whenever we want to call at that time that phone was only with uh, in one village only with one person or it is with an panchayat samiti or it is only with a gram panchayat after that what happened 
then uh, telephone booths are then started like local booth telephone booths are started in middle areas in after that year after that year again some cell phones are get started after that there is a cell phones are get started and nowadays everyone is having that my mobile phone. everyone is having mobile phone so this is what one long ago that is long acting phones are there only one telephones are there phones are there second thing is that intermediate intermediate in between intermediate booth that is nothing but buto bar button a uh, yellow color telephone booths were there the buto bar button after that mobile phones are get started for the shorter duration of time mobile phones are get cell phones are get started. and then after now everyone is having a mobile phone so within shortly very fastly we can communicate with the, each other so just for the remembering this is one type of a story so this is the classification of hypnotic and sedative so next point is that mechanism of action of this hypnotic and sedative particularly these drugs are using for the inducing of the sleep and what is its mechanism in what manner it does produce its action so let's see what is this so before that i just i would like to show you this is a model where which gives the information about the what is the mechanism of action of this um, barbiturates so whenever we are having whenever we are discussing about the barbiturate so we can say like this this barbiturates particularly this barbiturates produces a similar action as that of the natural sleep what happened whenever we are having a sleep what happened here is one of the very important this channel is called as a chloride channel this is called as what chloride channel this is an a chloride channel so this chloride channel this chloride channel this chloride channel now it is a close this chloride channel is presently it's a close so what happened when this chloride channel is get open when this gate open see this is if you see here is an uh, downward arrow and upward arrows are there so it's a two directional arrow is there so when this channel is uh, gate open if you see in this area there is a empty space here is an empty space nothing is available but here one agent is present that agent we call as a gaba that is nothing but gamma amino butyric acid so whenever this gaba is get bind at that point then and then only this channel is get open and as the channel is get open there is influx of one ion that we call as an chloride ions that is called as chloride ions so this is what the chloride channel this is what the chloride channel so this chloride ions are come by this chloride channels when when this gaba is get bind with this receptor and due to the binding of the gaba with this receptor this chloride ions are get open this is one point what happen when the patient is having insomnia at that time the gaba is not ready to bind here this side that is nothing but chloride channel is get not open that is nothing but chloride ions are not coming inside the cell patient is not having a sleep now we need to give an external support so whenever we are giving external support as like an a gaba one substance is get bind with this location which is a spherical in shape round in shape is goes and get bind with that area as it goes and get bind with the area it feels that this here is one agent and i need to open so again this channel is get open as the channel is get open immediately immediately chloride ions are come inside the cell chloride ions are come inside the cell that here cell that is the gaba this gaba receptor gaba receptor complex this gaba receptor complex this is a gaba receptor complex and this barbiturates are get bind with this uh, gaba receptor complex and as it is get bind with this complex it increases the influx of the chloride ion opening of the chloride channel and opening and influx of the chloride ion this is the most important thing and as the chloride ions enter inside the cell patient get sleep this is the most important thing patient gets to sleep so for the sleep it is necessary that this chloride channel should be get open this chloride channel should be get open and when this chloride channel open patient is going to go to sleep uh, benzodiazepines some gaba alcohol some neurosteroids they are also act on the same manner 
they all are acting on the same rank. But their location is different. Their location is different. Here at center, here at center, GABA is gate binding. At here, at this point, the benzodiazepine is acting. Here, the barbiturates are acting. Here, the alcohol are having this action. Here, this neurosteroids are having. All are acting on uh, this GABA chloride channel. And when they get bind at the different location, only one parameter is happening. There is a opening of this chloride channel. Opening of this chloride channel. And due to opening of this chloride channel, due to opening of this chloride channel, chloride ions enter inside the cell. And when the chloride ions enter inside the cell, we call as the patient is having a sleep. That's why this alcohol sar produces CNS depression diet. So for the depression, this chloride channel opening is the most important thing. CNS depression or the central nervous system depression, this particular alcohol, GABA, benzodiazepine, barbiturate, these all are plays the important role in this marker. So this is what its mechanism. And uh, uh, as we had seen in this, that all these barbiturates are gate binding at this GABA receptor channel, GABA receptor chloride channel and induces this chloride. And at high concentration, barbiturate directly increases the chloride conductance that is a GABA mimic action and inhibit the calcium dependent release of the neurotransmitter at a high concentration. That is a, a next higher mechanism of action, how these barbiturates are producing its a longer duration of action, etc. That is related with this GABA mimetic action, particularly calcium. Calcium is a, one of the substance ion due to the binding of the calcium. Some calcium channels are open, some excitation, it helpful for the excitation. And also at high concentration, it depresses the sodium and potassium channel. So whenever calcium ions enter inside the cell, calcium is an extracellular ion. When calcium comes inside the cell, it is a necessary that for maintenance, something should get out that is Potassium is the intracellular, it gives out. So due to this action exchange, there is again some neurotransmission release are there. So all these points are get totally get stopped due to the higher dose of this action. So this is what about the mechanism of action of the barbiturate as well as the mechanism of action of the other non-barbiturate like benzodiazepines and alcohols and some neurosteroids. So that I want to discuss with you for this uh, particularly um, this point uh, this part remaining part we will see on next part that is the uh, what is the effect of benzodiazepines and barbiturates on other system of uh, our body as well as what are the possible side effects and the adverse effect and uh, what are the therapeutic applications of these sedatives and hypnotics thanks for listening me thank you very much